with UND football head coach Bob Bartolomeo, a 33-18 win over Delta State. Coach, how's it feel to get the win, and the thoughts on how your team performed tonight? Uh, first of all, it was a great program win. Anytime you be a historic program like Delta State, uh, it's a feather in our cap. Uh, you know, the uh, Gulf South is, uh, produces some great football uh, teams as well as players, and they're always in the hunt for the national championship. So from that standpoint, uh, for us to represent our conference and to uh, beat a team from the Gulf South uh, uh, speaks volumes of our, uh, you know, how far we've come. So got to keep going. Uh, it's a great win. And, uh, you know, we look forward to next week already. Defensively for you guys, you know, this was a team bigger, faster, stronger than maybe you've seen the past couple weeks. What did you do to prepare your team for that? Because it certainly seemed that they, they didn't shy away from that challenge. No, I think it, uh, we talked all week about it being a fourth quarter game, and it really was. Uh, you know, we got one late there, but uh, it was we knew it was going to be a fourth quarter battle, and uh, they wouldn't go away quietly, and uh, they didn't. And they made a little run there in the second half. Uh, but uh, again, we practiced uh, real hard. Our kids were had a great practice week and uh, preparation, and uh, they did everything we asked this week. Uh, you know, we had a little adversity in the weather on Tuesday with the uh, hurricane and everything, and uh, they kept focus and uh, got the job done tonight. What was it specifically that you were able to slow Delta down? I mean, they had some drives, but never broke the big play. And Never really got. Com it never seemed like they got comfortable against your defense. I thought that was a combination of the front guys putting some pressure on the queue, and then uh, also our uh, back end guys uh, doing a good job of keeping everything in front of us. Uh, you know, number two is a threat. Anytime he touched the ball for them, whether it be the kickoff return or uh, uh, a pass play or a screen pass or a reverse, hey, that guy could go the distance. So uh, he's a uh, uh, quite a. You know, a really good player, a good guy that we had to keep uh, under wraps tonight, and I thought we did that. Offensively, what did you like out of your team on that side of the football tonight? I thought our quarterback played really well. I thought Chris had a uh, Chris was hot. Uh, he was throwing the ball really well, putting it on the mark with the receivers. Uh, Marquand's Marquand, and uh, Johnson was having a great game until he got hurt, and uh, you know so. <clears throat> I thought our receivers, and then uh, again, it goes back to up front. They started pressuring us, and uh, we were able to pick up the blitzes. Uh, Clay Feather didn't have the uh, rushing night that he usually has, but he, he did a great job of picking up blitzes in the back end and uh, allowing Chris to uh, find the open receiver. You mentioned Clay. He got that late, the big, the long touchdown run late, kind of bring his yardage total up. That allowed him to pass Craig Jenkins for that record single season rushing. Just overall, what can you say about Clay Feekter and maybe that you see coaching up the defense in practice against him that makes him such a dynamic running back? Well, the best thing about Clay Feekter is a junior. <laughs> so we got him back and, uh, you know, for another year. And uh, God love him. I mean, he is just a, a greatest kid. He never says anything. He just uh, comes to uh, work every day. He's been playing the last three weeks with a bad ankle. And uh, we, you know, we had to hold him out of practice for the majority of the week, both he and Rip. And, uh, you know, he, came, he comes to play every Saturday. So uh, Clay's a great player. Speaking of guys who do that, Marquan Edmonds, 14 catches. He got banged up a couple of times and came back. Is that the kind of performance that you expect to, to probably see out of him tonight, especially on his senior night here at I, Key Stadium? You know, we've come to expect that every week from Marquan, and I hope he's well enough to play next week. He's pretty uh, hobbled right now. Uh, he's going to be in a boot for the whole week, and uh, we'll get some x-rays on him on Monday. And uh, hopefully it's just a uh, sprained ankle and that uh, he can play next week because he is an integral part of our offense, needless to say. As big as this win was, obviously you have to go back into the GLVC next week to wrap the regular season against Urbana. What was the early message to the team to make sure that they're ready, I guess, for next week against Urbana? Well, we talked about being champions and not co-champions. We want to be outright champions, and if you do, we have to beat Urbana at Urbana next week. and. Uh, it uh, just uh, causes me to shudder when I think about last year when we went to Ohio Dominican and, and kind of laid an egg in, in Ohio, and it's uh, darn near in the same spot. So we'll be ready to play at Urbana, though. One more. We'll close on this. I mentioned it was senior night. We mentioned Marquand. But just overall, this group of seniors that were honored before the game tonight, what they've meant to this program to, to get it to this point where you're potentially on the verge of you know an outright GLVC championship and hopefully an NCAA Division II tournament playoff berth? Well, uh, they've done a great job of being leaders. Uh, they've 
constantly worked. Uh, they paid their dues. They got the, you know, we've gotten the snot kicked out of us a couple times too early in their careers. So they learned the hard way, and uh, nothing was given to them. And uh, they've just been a great group to be around and a fun group to be around. And uh, uh, you know, they're all going to graduate, which uh, is the most important thing. And uh, just a great group to be around. Coach, congratulations again, and thank you for the time. Thank you very much. Go Hounds.